Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want, and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at something that is big, fine, has class, a dial of brass, and kicks ass. This is the Roger Dubuis Chrono XL 45mm all polished stainless steel. This is one of 280 made. This is an outstanding example of one of the big Roger Dubuis sports watches. And I know from some of the feedback we've been getting on the channel that we have quite a few fans of the big Rogers here on the channel. So, you guys, this one's for you. Now, I like to say this watch, especially this exact reference, looks like something a steampunk action hero would wear. I'm going to throw it on my wrist and emphasize that Roger Dubuis was one of the first independent watchmakers to really go out on a limb and found his own brand, independent of one of the big luxury holding groups during the mid-1990s. So he was really a pioneer of what we call independent horology. These days, it's red hot. Back then, it was exceptionally audacious. Even more so is the fact that he took his Geneva watch training, finishing traditions, basically his background in high horology as a movement designer, a complication specialist at Patek Philippe, and he put it into big, bold watches like the sports activity watches of the early 2000s and the Chrono XL, which was launched from the mid-2000s on. The bottom line is that this watch is big and bold. You see a striking juxtaposition of high polish and then subdued natural tones. But on the wrist, as big as it is, it's a gentle giant. I have to emphasize that my wrist is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. So my wrist is actually pretty small, but this wears comfortably. It sits flat and it sits secure. The high standard of ergonomics is really a testament to the amount of time and energy Roger Dubuis put into building a very flat case back that is seamless, conforms gently to the skin, and allows this immense watch, which has very substantial heft, to sit securely even on a smaller wrist. Now it is 16 and a half millimeters thick, so I am going to emphasize that with a bit of a hooked bezel and that incredible girth, this is going to be a tough one to fit under any kind of sleeve, short of, well, maybe some sort of snow coat. So it's not really one to wear with formal attire that's going to involve thick sleeves, but with the subdued look, the combination of the metal and the darker tones, it does have a becoming formality about it that can make it a companion in polite company, just perhaps not with polite company where tight sleeves are required. Now I want to call out the comfort of this Roger Dubuis Deployant Clasp, twin trigger actuated, very finely finished. It's polished on its flanks, brushed on its interior, and with a twin trigger, it's very secure. And the interior of this alligator and calfskin strap is very, very soft on the skin. Now it is hand cut and hand stitched, so it's an impressive piece of craftsmanship in its own right. And because it is so supple, on the wrist, this immense watch is very comfortable. It's got a great feel to it. I really like the way Roger Dubuis finished this one at an ergonomic level. Moving from the fit to the finish and the look, I've got to emphasize that this is a bold timepiece. It has a couple of distinguishing traits. Naturally, those subdued tones, brown, bronze, black, gray, rhodium, and anthracite. You see them all on the strap, on the dial, the chapter ring. But the watch also has a great degree of depth. And you can see from the bezel inboard, there's a lot of articulation. First of all, you have this knurling of the bezel. It adds a lot of character, and it's not just from overhead. It's also from the side. You can see how the bezel juts out from the case flank, really imparting a look of broad shoulders and strength, almost razor-like in its severity. But as you move inboard, the watch plunges down, and the chapter ring, the rehaut of this watch, is huge. It's like the inside of a roller derby arena, and you slide down it to a dial that features as much detail as it features sheer geography. Now each of the highly stylized Roman numerals is a gloss black, so in addition to the reflective circular grained metallic of the chapter ring and the sole metallic of the base dial itself, you have the gloss gleam of those individual highly stylized Roman numerals. They add another texture, another tone. Each of the subdials has a very special, very delicate, concentric guilloche pattern that radiates out in concentric rings from the center. It's subtle, but it's there. And each of the chapter rings of the sub-registers is beautifully polished. Now, there are a few shocks of color here that enliven the watch. So you've got polished hands, diamond-polished 
Dauphine style, they are individually loomed. This is a fully loomed dial. Each of the hour indices features a loomed dot, so you can see this watch easily at night. It's not a strict dress watch in that sense. The red, because it's used minimally and artfully, explodes off the dial and really aids in the legibility of the subdials. Always kind of a weak point of a conventional chronograph. Here, Roger Dubuis turns that rule on its head by first making the subdials huge, and second, by making all of the chronograph functions entirely red and thus easy to read. Plus, you get that little red shock at the end of the polished and faceted constant seconds hand at 9 o'clock. The detail is everything you would expect of the haute de gamme. Vacheron Constantin, Audemars Piguet, Jezur Le Coult. This watch is in that league, and it starts on the dial, but Roger Dubuis drives home the point on the case back. You're looking at the Roger Dubuis caliber RD78 entirely in-house to a degree that's exceptional in the industry. Since the early 2000s, Roger Dubuis, thanks to exceptional investment by Dubuis and his original business partner, Carlos Diaz, they developed the ability to make their own escapement components, including hair springs. For reference, Jezur Le Coult doesn't even make its own hair springs. Very impressive for a manufacturer of this size. Now this watch is also one of only 280 made, so while this is an incredibly becoming sight, you're not going to see it too often. But let's take a little tour around the RD78 movement. Now the first thing you're going to notice is that it is a micro rotor automatic, and that gives you two advantages. First, it moves the winding rotor out of the way. So instead of having a rotor always blocking half the movement as it pivots about its axis, you've got it sunken into the same plane as the rest of the clockwork, the drivetrain, the mainspring barrel, so it doesn't take up the view or any part of it. It just becomes part of the spectacle. The other nice thing is that it allows the movement to be made fairly thin, so you can have this incredibly deep dial, and this angle gives you a real sense of just how deep that dial is. It takes up over half of the depth of this thick case, so rather than having a big bulky movement, Dubuis gives you an incredibly dramatic dial. I'll accept that trade-off any day. 5.8 millimeters thick, despite the fact that this is an automatic winding chronograph, it's substantially thinner than something like a Valjoux 7750. It's even thinner than Rolex's benchmark 3135 automatic winding center seconds date movement that you'll find in the likes of the Submariner or the Sea Dweller. This is high horology at its best. It is a Geneva Seal standard watch, and you can see the Ponson de Genève right here above the column wheel. So it is Geneva Seal like Vacheron Constantin, like Patek Philippe used to be before they went to their kind of uh, fox guarding the hen house, Patek Philippe Seal. And all of the Geneva traditions are evident. First of all, you have linear Cote de Genève across all the bridges, the bridges of the winding rotor cage, the bridges below the chronograph mechanism, and on all of the levers themselves, straight-grained or linear-grained dressage brushing, very subtle, very beautiful. Black polish around the circumference of the capped column wheel. It is a column wheel movement, but in the Geneva tradition, the column wheel must be capped. It can't be open. Roger Dubuis sets it apart with that black-polished cap, and at its center, the only heat-blued cobalt blue screw in the entire movement. All the others feature camphored slots, radius circumference, and black polished heads. So you still get fine finish on your screws, but you get that one blue one to designate the column wheel and let it stand out. Now all of the golden wheels of the chronograph system feature a circular dressage or brushing. And one of my favorite features of this watch that really set it apart, not just as an article of exceptional craftsmanship, but as a product of human nature and human humor is the double devil's tail. Let me see if I can show you better detail of this. This might be time to go like control plus on your screen if you can. Blow it up as big as you can, but a double devil's tail regulator. Now it is screw fixed, so it has stability against shock. It's not going to be displaced by vibration on the wrist, but an eccentric screw actually moves the index to start the balance moving faster or slower and each of the pointers towards the plus and the minus side of the index adjustment is in the shape of a little traditional devil's tail with an arrow at the end very beautiful and very well done there is a fat anglage and découvrage on this movement so you have this heavy polish around each of the screw sinks and each of the angled edges of every bridge and plate features an exceptional amount of mirrored surface. Now, there are a couple of different types of anglage 
and partridge eye polishing around countersinks that you'll see in the industry. Some are more subtle than others, take up less surface area, and therefore are more difficult to see. Roger Dubuis Craftsman make them big and broad and shiny, so you can appreciate them even without a loop. But under a loop, watch out. That's exceptional stuff. Very tight perlage on the base plate. You can see it underneath the winding rotor, and you can see it underneath the escapement. No expense is spared to make this big, bold, brass, ass-kicking sports watch just as fine as any dress reference from Vacheron Constantin or Patek Philippe. It's a bit of an exception in that case, but Roger Dubuis always has been. Check out this Roger Dubuis Chrono XL, 45 millimeters in stainless steel. It's one of only 280, but in terms of style and substance, you've got to consider this Chrono XL to be virtually unique.